right. Stronger. Imagine a world without choices. Stronger. Stronger. Imagine you can't make your own decision. That wouldn't be a world for me. That wouldn't be a world for you. You I see. Tell them they're gonna be stronger Together, together we can make it right Oh, what purpose is a better Jamaica for you and I Gonna be stronger together Time we all just to unify Oh, what purpose is a better Jamaica for you and I It is a natural right for every human being to be free Free is so free So the government is there to protect you and me why is the objective is to liberate the citizens from colonial bondage, them regulation, them taxation, from Jamaica we independent. Be stronger together, together we can make it right. Oh, what purpose is a better Jamaica for you and I? We're gonna be stronger together, come we all just unify. Oh, what purpose is a better Jamaica for you and I Nonpartisan, constitutional, Republic of Jamaica You see the sovereignty of every citizen should be protected Alright, good evening Uniters, a blessed evening and uh, welcome to yet another program on UIC Liberty TV. Let me introduce myself. I'm your host for tonight, Winston Wright, chairman of your political movement. And tonight we're doing a slightly more relaxed, more off-key conversational piece where you get a chance to talk to us about those issues that are affecting you particularly about our energy security situation. Particularly about our energy situation. And it says, energy security, what's the big deal? And tonight we're here to converse about that, to figure out how things should work. Now, Uniters are astute people and we are paying attention. So we would have seen that exchange between Paulwell, Minister Paulwell, or rather, I should say, opposition spokesperson Paul Well and Minister Vaz in the Parliament recently, where the matter of LNG, liquefied natural gas, came up. And we all remember the great controversy because our government has never done anything. And I mean, governments have never done anything without controversy because nothing is ever straightforward with these two colonial parties. Primary motive, graft and the oneself. So LNG was a big controversy for both governments until it finally happened. And even so, there's still controversy. So even to this day, there's still great controversy. So when, when we look and see what is happening, we realize that there's questions that were asked of the minister that he couldn't answer. So he has asked for 90 days to provide the answer. But here's what we know from that exchange, that a particular company, uh, New Fortis, which won the contract to provide liquefied natural gas to Jamaica and uh, to the government and the people of Jamaica, to JPS, to diversify our energy, our electricity generating fuel and therefore control cost has come into some controversy because the way the setup, the contract was negotiated, was negotiated for U40 supply liquid, liquefied natural gas to JPS, which JPS in turn would use to generate energy. And this is supposedly cheaper than crude oil. And of course, for that, we needed to build out what was called a regasification facility. And, and that was to convert the natural gas from the two state. Well, it has to be converted to one state to be transported. So to liquid to be transported and then back to gas to be consumed, to be burnt. So that facility was built out at a cost. And of course, we don't have the negotiating power. So when we negotiate with these multinationals, we give them guarantees. 
And of course, we guaranteed them customers apparently. And, and uh, we're waiting to hear to confirm if that is the case. So JPS customers would have been their guaranteed customer base. So when JPS buy the liquefied natural gas, there'd be a surcharge passed on to all customers to pay for that regasification facilities, right? I mean, if you've ever done business, you can realize what, what a terrible idea that is. But anyway, so paying for that regasification facility is everybody. So big business over there, uh, big business over here, com and commercial consumer over there. And of course, residential consumers will be paying for all of that. Now, it turns out that certain big businesses have decided that, you know what? Instead of I pay so much to JPS for energy, might as well I just buy the liquefied natural gas and use it myself to generate my own electricity. So the question was asked. Now, since several big businesses are opting out of buying energy from JPS and therefore paying that surcharge for the energy generated through natural gas, is it going to be left only to me, to, to the majority of the residential consumers to foot the surcharge that pays for that regasification facility. Now, you see how complicated that is. It gives you a headache just thinking about it, right? So, if we're paying for it and energy is so high because of the war and it's, it's a non-renewable resource and right now, today, OPEC and other oil-producing countries have decided to cut their production. So, they are going to produce less than projected oil, which means there's a scarcity and if there's a scarcity of the product, the prices go up. So look at your light bill and the last energy cost. You just paid the JPS. So the question is, are you footing a bill? Did the government negotiate a silly contract? I'm just asking. And you are now having to foot the bill for their incompetence, lack of foresight. I don't know what to call it. So you tell me. So you're going to call me on WhatsApp. Yes. What's up? 491-4995. And now you guys in the studios with me providing technical assistance. So I'm going to ask her to put that number up for us shortly. But it's 491-4995. So I'm asking you, Uniters, to call in on one of those very few, one of those rare occasions and share your opinion on a topic. So energy security, what's the big deal? So what is the big deal? Only us consumers will have to pay. Uh, that number is 491-4995. That's 491. Uh, we need to correct the number on screen. 491-4995. What is the big deal if consumers are left footing the bill for our JPS folly? Give me a call. Let me know what you think. Let's have this wholesome discussion. But in the meantime... Do you know what makes up your energy cost? What makes up your energy cost as a consumer? What are you paying for? There, there's a very long line of things that are listed on your bill. Energy first, energy second, uh, IPP. So, you know, I, I'm not even sure what all of those mean. I know IPP is independent power producer. All right, so that would be your wig done as well as uh, I don't remember what the, the, hydro, the solar farm in Westmoreland, uh, Savalamar to be exact, uh, about the waterworks region. I don't remember what the company is called. But yes, it pays those guys. It pays also the Rockfort generating barge. But why are you paying those guys? Why is there a separate charge to those guys? And, and let's look at it this way. If you went to the shop to buy eggs, right? And when you go to the shop, the shopkeeper said the eggs will cost you two dollars, and in that two dollars, fifty cent is for the farmer, fifty cent is for the hen, and one dollar is for me. Uh, you'd wonder why you're paying the farmer and the hen when they already buy it from the farmer, right? Right, it's the same thing I'm wondering. So, when you pay your light bill, you're paying JPS, and you're also paying the independent power producers that they get energy from. Exactly. So, would you do better generating your own electricity? So, what if there was a massive opening of the market to solar products so that everyone could afford it? Wouldn't you be doing better? 
than paying all these charges to JPS. And we'll talk about the JPS monopoly in a bit and how the UIC will break that monopoly and turn your energy insecurity into real energy security. Okay? So the lines are open at your leisure. Feel free to reach out and let me know how you feel about your energy. Energy security, what's the big deal? So do you think, the first question, do you think we're energy secure? And what's the big deal if you think we are? So I'm listening out for your call. Now, the UIC supports green energy wholeheartedly. We support renewable practices, sustainable renewable practices, whether it's farming, energy generation, or whether it's building, whatever it is, we, su we, su we support that wholeheartedly. Simply this, Jamaica is an island with finite land mass, with a finite land mass, meaning we have to take care of it so it's here for the next generation and succeeding generations. So we support sustainable living and energy is no different. We on the island are stuck with the Jamaica Public Service Company. And in the past, the Jamaica Public Service Company was a government-owned energy generating facility that generated electricity for the entire island. It, it did so in mainly two ways. There were two small hydro plants on the island, as there still is, two small hydro plants on the island that they use in addition to several uh, heavy-duty fuel oil or heavy fuel oil generating fa facilities. Uh, Rockfort being one, Bogan St. James being another, and there's one in St. Catherine. Now, later on, they added the Rockfort power barge to the energy mix, which is privately owned and burns the same heavy fuel oil and generates electricity that is shunted to the grid. Now, while energy generation has diversified and, and, and improved tremendously over the years, we were stuck with an energy generation system that is largely failing. So the government said, you know what, uh, we don't have the money, which is not that they didn't have the money, is that it's how we spend our money that is the problem. So they ended up divesting the JPS along with all the other assets of the country that they divested over the years. Now, JPS was bought firstly by a company out of Japan, uh, Marabini. And uh, there, there, it is said that that company, when it bought JPS, was on the verge of bankruptcy. And at the end of its tenure, owning JPS, it was a viable company, it became a viable company again, just from its ownership of JPS. And after that, JPS went through several divestment and, and, and broken up ownership. And now it, it's in the hands of, of these persons. Now, what has happened over the years is that uh, a private power company came on stream uh, called Winton Wig Farm, Wind Farm, sorry, and they started generating wind energy and selling that to JPS. And uh, later on, in recent times, I think it's it's within uh, the last two years, a solar system came online that is also selling energy to JPS. But before that, there was a lovely idea, I'm not afraid to say so, where persons called independent power producers could do what is called um, power sharing. So I, as an individual, could have gone purchased a solar system, put it on my house, and do what is called a grid tie. And then the excess energy that I generate, I would send it into the JPS grid. So JPS would then take that from me at a concessionary rate and sell that back to other persons who don't have that. And the idea behind that was to reduce the amount of energy generation being done through heavy fuel oil, which is expensive depending on what is happening. You know, during the Gulf War, there was a hike in fuel prices. And now again, that there is another war being fought, uh, the same thing is happening. And from time to time, OPEC, which is the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, they being a cartel, and a cartel is simply just a, a group of companies that, that controls a market. So because OPEC now has come, all the countries have come together to form that cartel. They, from time to time, determine supply 
on the market. And of course, you know that from basic economy, there's a relationship between demand and supply. Right? So when demand is high, prices are high. And when demand is low, prices are. And of course, you, 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 you remember the basic economy stuff, right? I won't go into economics class. I'll leave that to the money doctor, Mr. Joseph Patterson, to teach us about economy. Now, we find ourselves in a situation now where we have a monopoly and that monopoly has been privatized. It has been given the private interest to own our gen energy generation. And from that, we now find ourselves in this situation that we're in where uh, the, at one point, the private power purchasing agreements, those were suspended and they were just using who they had already. So persons couldn't do a grid tie anymore. You would be stuck paying the high prices that persons, well, that the company is demanding from you because they are the only provider. Now, let's move to the important part. Since it's only one power company, how would the UIC solve that problem? It's simple. We would firstly move aggressively to diversify our energy mix. And that's just fancy talk for having more solar generation on a large scale, to have more wind energy generation on a large scale, and use less of the hydrocarbon fuel, heavy fuels, to generate electricity. We would also enable residential and business customers to tap into their energy plan. So for example, someone who wants to do geothermal, if you have the resources to, the government, the UIC government would not act as an impedance to you doing that. Or whether you want to do solar or hydro or wind, whatever you want to do on your home, that is yours to do. We would also make sure that regardless of where you are, your excess energy goes into the grid and go to those who need it. You'll be able to shunt energy from one place to the other. For example, I have two homes, for argument's sake, and I'm generating energy here. I can generate energy here and shunt it to my other property 50 miles down the road. And you ask, how would that work? It works in other places. And it's simply this. It's done through metering. You meter the amount of energy you put in the grid at this point and meter the amount of energy you take off the grid at the other point. And of course, once you keep both of them balanced, then there's no cost to you. If you take more energy out of the grid than you put in, then you pay. If you put more energy in the grid than you take out, then the owner of the grid pays. That brings me to another interesting point. We would separate energy generation from energy distribution. And what do we mean by that? And you're thinking that is impossible. In several other places, so it's not unheard of, the person or the company who generates electricity is not the one that transmits it. If you look at the energy transmission grids, all those wires that run up and down Jamaica, if you look at them as a network of road, as a highway, or highways and lanes, or highways and byways, and the energy generation points as bus stops or bus terminuses, then you would understand what we're talking about, where you'd be able to get on the highway at one point and get off at another, or get on the highway and stay on the highway. Now, let's say you own energy generation, then since transmission is a public service, it's a, it's a good that benefits the majority, then we would want that to be a public service. So it would be constructed and maintained as a public service. So everyone, whether you're a business or an individual, would be able to use that grid to transmit your energy generated to different points on the island. Now think how much that would encourage the use of renewable resources and the investment in renewable energy. So that is one of the main points. As it is now, the current energy grid is notorious for being energy inefficient, whether it be theft or energy loss, because 
those wires, you might see them as, as, as wires and believe that the electricity, you know, can flows regardless. The, 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 the parasitic plants, for example, that grows on, on those utility wires, they act as a, an impedance to free flow of electricity from one point to the other. And in some places, these lines are terribly overgrown and touching each other. You have trees and branches that are touching, and all of that leads to inefficiencies, whether it shorts out the grid and shut it down for a while, or it just saps energy and transmits it to ground. So a transmission system that is a public good and maintained for that purpose would allow every every Jamaica, every individual, whether your business or otherwise, to tap into that grid and transmit your energy generated by renewable sources to wherever you want. So you could generate electricity and send it to your elderly parent in another part of the island, for example. You could generate energy and send it to, to, to your loved ones somewhere else. You could generate it as a company and send it to your home so that is the pluses from a very diversified energy market. So uh, we're, we're still looking to hear from you at uh, 491-4995. That's 491-4995. Call us on WhatsApp. All right. So it's a WhatsApp line. So wherever you are in the world, tuning in. And good night again, Uniters. Whether you're joining us from home or abroad, whether you're used to your renewable resources, or you're just hearing about it for the first time, welcome to the discussion. And we'd love to hear from you, so don't be shy. Uh, give us a call, and we'll take your call live so you can share with your fellow Uniters. But we continue the discussion on energy. So with a transmission system that is based and the open market concept that allows everybody to look at how they can benefit from energy generation from renewable resources would understand. And I'll give you an example because a lot of people don't believe in, in energy, in, in, non, in renewable energy sources, alternative sources as they are called. But let me give you an example of that working tremendously in a business favor. I had the great fortune of working for an organization at its head where I was able to chart the direction and the course of the entire organization. And one of the decisions that I made with the support of the board was to pursue the acquisition of equipment that allowed us to not rely on the standard Com internal combustion engines, uh, gasoline engines, but rather use electric engines. And I'll give you an example. I had one piece of equipment that was bought for just about $2.8 million US. And the, the standard design that is used worldwide is internal combustion engine uh, driven system with an electrical package to run the various components of that machine. And I bought two of those that were battery operated. Now, here's what it did for my operations at the time. It removed the recurring cost of fuel from my budget. I didn't have to think about fuel any at all. And when the fuel prices got volatile, that didn't affect me more than the minor changes that would occur through energy generation because the prices on the grid, while they seem to move here rapidly, <laughs> they don't move there as rapidly. And also, I did get a solar package because that was the other thought. And I use that solar package now to keep my equipment charged. So I'm generating electricity off the grid and I'm charging equipment, not relying on, on hydrocarbon and gasoline fuel. And as a result of that heavy investment in battery powered equipment, I was able to turn the well to break even on a startup operation within three years instead of the, the five years projected by our accountants. 
we were also able to turn a profit in in that three years and were able to repay whatever debts we had on the operation by the end of year four. So if any of you have done business like that, you understand what tremendous feat that was. And it was largely due, largely not solely, but largely due to the investment in alternative energy. There are other efficiencies that helped us, but largely due to that investment in battery operated equipment. Now, am I saying that all alternative energy solutions are right for the market? No, there are still some that needs a lot of tweaking, a lot of R&D research and development. But there are, there are some aspects of using renewables that have been around for a very long time and has been honed to a point where it can provide a substantial, substantial advantage to any business or any individual. So UIC is very keen on that. Uh, we, have, we have looked at the Caribbean region to see what is happening uh, with energy diversity. And we see where countries, for example, St. Vincent and the Grenadines is doing geothermal. Barbados is heavily invested. I think Barbados is one of the, the Caribbean countries that is most heavily invested in, in, in solar and photovoltaics. Right? Uh, Jamaica, as well, is, is stepping up. But there are other countries that are leap and bounds ahead of us in terms of the embrace of the technology. You have countries such as in, in Australia and even Africa that are doing great work on research and development of new battery storage technology and a lot of work on, on improving the energy generation capacity of photovoltaics. But there is nothing technical coming out of Jamaica, as usual, we are consuming. Now, let's look at what this can do for us. For example, two years ago, was it two years ago? I think it was, yes, about two years ago, Puerto Rico and Costa Rica were competing on, on solar. And Costa Rica was able to generate electricity to run the entire country for a full day, a full day on solar only. Now that is important because as you know, there is usually just about nine or 10 hours, 11 hours where there is little to no sunlight. So to have that ability is very tremendous. It meant that your storage plans were well thought out. Now, that is usually the big drawback when persons discuss the use of solar storage. Lithium ion, which is, which is now the preferred storage, lithium ion, which is the preferred storage, is usually, usually seen as volatile and lead acid batteries are usually seen as, as difficult to keep capacity. But in places like Spain, for example, alternative storage techniques have been used for a long time where they use heat mediums to move the energy. So instead of capturing the energy as electricity, they capture the energy as heat and then use that heat to move from through that medium to another source where it is then used to generate electricity at the next medium through a heat exchanger. So there, there is a lot of ways that we can use and a lot of emerging technology on how to use photovoltaics. And Jamaica isn't doing any research and development, but the UIC who believes in who believes in sustainable development would will be pushing for research and development in this field because if we don't become energy secure we're in a big problem so now let's talk about that big problem 
because we asked about why it's a big deal, so I'm letting you know now why that is a big deal. We had a $1 trillion budget that was read the other day. And we, we have not had a chance to examine that budget closely. But from cursory glance, a significant portion of that budget, as usual, is centered around debt servicing. What that means is that a large amount, usually way more than half, is going to go towards paying off debt that we, that we have accumulated over the past budgetary period. Now, that restricts our spending and even restrict our earnings. Now, that debt that we have to pay off, the only way to clear that debt is by producing. And here's why. Our debt is in U.S. dollars. I am not aware of any Jamaican dollar debt that we hold. And I know bonds were renegotiated payable in Jamaican dollars, but it is still set on the U.S. benchmark where the interest rate and the calculation is in U.S. dollars, but then it's paid out in Jamaican dollars. So that is a trick, ladies and gentlemen. But I'll leave the money doctor to teach you about that. Now, that debt can only be cleared because it's in a foreign currency by earning our way out of it. So since we're not printing U.S. dollars here, and I hope we're not, we can only earn U.S. dollars. And of course, like any other commodity, it is subject to demand and supply, right? Now, to make sure that we have a steady demand and is able to pay off our bills, we have to earn it. And one of the few ways we can earn it is through production, manufacturing, processing, creating value-added goods. Whether we're going to take our agricultural produce and make sure that our agricultural produce get exported because they are, they are high-quality organic produce. Because they are high-quality organic produce, we're going to make sure that we take them, we, we add value to them in the value-added chain, and then we export them to a market charge them us dollars bring in that foreign currency and use that to service our debt now how are we going to do that when energy is so high it's high for a consumer so imagine a corporate customer uh without saying who i work for the light bills i get at work are in the millions of dollars millions of dollars on a monthly basis yes so if energy is so expensive for the consumer, particularly the commercial consumer, that acts as a deterrent to production and to businesses. So imagine now, instead of a company paying millions of dollars monthly for energy, if they're able to generate it at a substantially reduced cost to them, say in the hundreds of thousands, if not thousands, or purchase it at the same rate, that would make life way easier. It would make their products more competitive because their co the cost of their final product, their end product would be way cheaper. We could compete with larger markets. That's why Trinidad is able to export so much because they have oil, so they're able to generate energy at a cheaper rate than any of us. We're buying from Venezuela and Nigeria and other countries that produce oil and sells it for profit. So if we want to produce our way out of the debt burdened economy that we're in we have to produce as the uic has always said and one of the key key factors in having a high output economy is having cheap energy readily available energy for persons to tap into and produce so if we, we are used to those periods where brownouts would occur every week and at one point when I was a child, would have at least two brownouts a day in the summer, you would have full blackouts. These days, we don't have blackouts as much, but we still have brownouts. We still have unstable voltage supply. And of course, we still have that insecurity that when prices in terms of fuel in the market goes up, we worry that our fuel prices go up. And they do go up, way up, very far. So we have to pay attention to those things. And that's why the UIC believe that a healthy energy market, a diversified energy market, an energy market with a high reliable, renewable, sorry, and reliable energy source is essential. And that is why solar, 
and wind are prime factors for us. Uh, we were an island that is washed by the Northeast trade winds. And those very powerful, well-known air currents flow across our islands throughout the seasons. And it's something that we can tap into. Now, we have talked about solar a lot. Well, I've talked about solar a lot. And I've talked about wind a bit. But there are other energy sources out there. For example, coming out of a, a, a competitive scientific program called XPRIZE, there was a project that looked at harnessing wave energy, for example. Because as you know, and for those who are students of physics, if you have motion, then that is referred to as kinetic energy, right? And you can take that kinetic energy and turn it into potential energy back to kinetic energy. So the wave motion would give you the ability to do that. So wave energy is another emerging source of energy. But again, on an island that is washed by waves, we are not doing anything. We are waiting on the rest of the world to develop this technology and then for us to go and buy it at an expensive cost instead of using our know-it-all, our initiative, and see what we can bring to our market, what we can develop for our market. They talk about building STEM schools, and that is great if they actually do it, when they actually do it, if it actually works. We also need to invest in our universities, and the president and I have always said this, our universities need to become practical schools of learning, not just theoretical schools of learning but practical school of learning where our engineers will look at these projects for their thesis, for their doctorate and, and, and so on, or even for their bachelors. So we need to develop that drive outside of Dr. T.P. Leckie. And there's very little research and development that came out of Jamaica technical schools. Our agricultural schools are basically shuttered in an era where organic farming is the buzzword and a very marketable crop. They talk about brand Jamaica, but there's no brand Jamaica organic. But the UIC has pledged to do that for our farmers, to make farming something viable, something sought after the world over. So we have a bright future, mind I say, ahead of us. If we can have leadership that does not only pay lip service to development and act as gatekeeper for the rich and the connected few, but actually allow Jamaicans to excel, or Jamaicans to step out, make mistakes, learn and grow. You know, I, I had a thought on the way home this evening. I looked at somebody drive past me at a breakneck speed in a Porsche SUV, and we all know how much that cost. And I thought to myself, there's a career that's missing in Jamaica. There's nobody that's calling themselves a venture capitalist. You know, that's not a bad word. A venture capitalist, venture as in business plan, as in business execution, capitalist as in capitalize, providing capital, which is startup money or seed money. So there's nobody that is looking at business, potential businesses and saying, hey, you have a great idea. Cut me in for 50% and I'll stake you 50% of your capital needs or however they want to work that deal. There's nobody doing that, not on any large scale. We boast that our stock market is doing the best. Yes, our stock market is doing good because that's the only market people are willing to invest in because they know that they can run to their connected friends in government to bail them out when things go south. But we're not putting our money into tangible ventures to develop, to make the country go. And those who are willing to do so are kept out of the market because the connected few don't want to become part of the capital market. And of course, the PSOJ is very certain that they don't want the competition. They want to be able to import it and control the pricing of it and the consumption of it. So we have to make sure that we look to chart a new direction to build an economy that is grassroots up, not trickle down because Bakramasa believe that it's time for us to get somewhere. 
or that they need to bequeath unto us. But because the market is open and you're able to tap into that market by the sweat of your brow. Every Jamaican is very, very, very ingenuitive and will look forward to any opportunity to create something. And we all just need an opportunity to do so. Create the right energy mix that will allow just that hedge to give you that margin to succeed. So if you, if you look at all the businesses that want to go somewhere, all the skilled workers, all the artisans who could have developed the business but can't because they can't afford the energy mix. So they have to come to your home and throw a wire up. You know, I'm, I'm not suggesting that anybody is doing anything illegal. I, I meant on somebody else who is paying his property. I have no evidence of that. But, you know, if persons could create, had the opportunity to invest in energy alternatives and be viable and be able to set up a shop, for example, and and produce lovely furnishings from whatever material they are, they are skilled at working in, in, instead of having to struggle to find electricity to run their welders or their planers <clears throat> or their mitre saws, or even to run their bakery or their black making machine or, or their, their, their sandblaster, whatever it is that you're looking to do commercially that you need energy for. And so we need to step up our game in that regard. And right now, the UIC is not only talking about it, we actually have viable plans to diversify that energy mix that we talk about and make sure that you are able to enjoy an energy secure future. But I'm still waiting to hear from our, our viewers on WhatsApp. I, I see quite a lot of persons trading comments in the comment section, but everybody is shy tonight. Nobody wants to call it. I'm willing to put myself out there to speak with you to answer your question. I'd speak to you about the UIC's energy plan instead of delivering to you what the UIC is saying. So come on, let's talk. Give me a call. Number is at the bottom of the screen. You can call in live. It's 491-4995. And let's have a, a lovely discussion. I help you understand what the UIC is willing to do to make sure your economy is stronger. So don't be shy. Uh, we're just 43 minutes in. I think we have about 17 minutes left in the program. Uh, so reach out and, and, and let's have a discussion. But in the meantime, let's continue discussing energy alternatives. Uh, recently, the government has started to work on uh, electric vehicle policy. And while, like all things government, it, it's a secret document that you can't ever seem to find or get a hold of when you write to the relevant ministry. But the UIC is looking at that, and all of a sudden, the government wants to develop a policy for that. But is a policy really necessary to import an electric vehicle? We have to ask that question. And I do see quite a few electric vehicles around in Jamaica. Of different kind for example there, there's a gentleman i know that has an electric scooter and i'm looking to see what the government says or does about those because one of the things that is noticeable is that the new road traffic act that was passed has very little to say about electric vehicles very little when my review of the act only came across and I stand like I'm open for correction across two references to electric vehicles in that document, and nothing substantive. But they are working on an electric vehicle framework. I'm not sure how that will tie into what is happening currently in the market. But uh, there are several electric vehicles on our streets. I, I know of an electric supercar, and I, I know of that electric scooter that I. I spoke to you about, I know of electric bicycles that are in our markets. So it's great to see the embracing of emerging technology. 
but as usual uh, there, there is no framework that supports that and when i say framework the government is not expected to be a controller of the market and the uic is opposed to government control of the market what we'd expect to see is classification from the government of those vehicles that would allow persons to know how to handle those equipment on the road and how they would interact with other road users and law enforcement not to keep persons out of the market or to limit who can import or export so that is something that the uic will pay attention to over the coming weeks and months as to what will happen with these electric vehicles as the quote-unquote policy emerges but just know we're paying attention but back to our jps monopoly uh, does anyone online know did i mean are you aware that the jps for example has a guaranteed profit margin is that common knowledge that the jamaica public service company is guaranteed the amount of profit they'll make each year yes that was one of the conditions for the divestment of jps so when prices go up then regardless of what the regulators say that oh i'm going to review the jps rate request that request is academic because there's a guaranteed profit margin so as long as the profit will dip based on projection there has to be an increase to compensate so our utility bills will always trend upwards always and it becomes even more apparent when those losses are not only about fuel cost meaning if customers were to migrate from the grid in droves then there'll be a matching increase to those who remain on the grid that's what that means for your pocket now what do you want the uic to do about this monopoly for you i've already explained what we plan to do and what we can do but is that what you want do you want us to break the monopoly do you want us to separate generation from transmission as in separate who generate the electricity from who sends electricity to the different points in the island do you think that will benefit you as a consumer will that make your energy cost lower and your energy supply stable if you're a business owner would that make your business more profitable or would it be worse off for you those are the things i want to hear from our viewers tonight so put it in the comment section or even call us and, and share that with us and we go from there now i see cool guy saying is nuclear an option nuclear is not an option for the uic because of the very very volatile nature of a nuclear fuel it is a very reliable source of energy and it is one of the forces as a matter of fact of life our sun is powered by nuclear fission and the light and the energy from our sun from that fission process in turn gives us life on this lovely blue planet that we're living on but because of the volatile nature the potential for very large-scale disaster that will have a destabilizing effect and a very large area of the planet not only affecting us but the potential is to affect even persons who don't subscribe to this form of energy so no for that reason we have not considered solar sorry uh nuclear energy as a viable alternative source all right not one dollar in that budget is for renewable energy uh, that's Adam Alan Scott saying that thank you uh, Jeanette Gordon electric scooters or bicycles need to be licensed they are silent and often time heard pedestrian <clears throat> thank you for that point uh, Jeanette Graham Janet Graham those are very good points uh, not only the scooters and bicycles but also the electric cars they're, they're very silent and that's why 
in some countries, the policy is to create an artificial engine sound to signal others, to create an audible presence for that vehicle in some markets. So those are things that I believe that a policy on, on electric vehicles should look at and not a market control like we're used to. So yes, but in, in terms of your personal life and your business, how do you see wind energy, even geothermal energy, solar energy, and of course, a, a divested energy generation and transmission system working for you? Is that something you're open for? Because a vote for the UIC is a vote for these very, very forward-thinking plans that would set us on a growth trajectory and if held in continuity would serve us for decades to come. Our beloved son isn't planning to run out of steam anytime soon. And the Northeast trades have been blowing across Jamaica since time immemorial. So we expect that to continue. So please share with us. I, I, I know a lot of persons are in the comment section sharing with us and we do appreciate you. But we invite you to also join us. Break that shy streak and join us online. Give us a call. Let us hear your voice. Let us hear your opinion on this matter. Also, if you're shy and you want to post your questions in the chat, we take your questions just to see them. And we are as appreciative of you being here online with us. Uh, we have eight minutes to go, and we'd love to hear one of your voices. So come on, reach out. Now, in Australia, there is a famous race that is undertaken, and, and that race has even gone to the ocean, meaning they are doing it on ocean as well, where you operate a vessel, whether a car or a boat that is solar powered. So from time to time, we, we see these ingenious things being tried. At the, boat, the race in Australia, that it stands out for me because that race is usually for high school seniors. Yes, high school kids are required to create these solar powered vehicles as part of their as part of, of their school project so they're doing a lot to advance solar energy usage the uptake and solar energy especially in australia uh, they have recently created a housing development that is 100 percent off the grid uh, they have a battery management unit that's just a fancy name for a big battery with cooling heating and charge control and so it's like two shipping containers filled with battery that runs that entire housing facility for thousands and that's the kind of moves that are being made in the rest of the world to make sure that we transition to a new future that is in the interest of the people. So when the UIC speaks about alternative energy, we're not paying lip service like the two colonial parties. We're looking at what is happening in the rest of the world, what is happening in the developed world, what are the best practices out there, and looking how we can use our ideas with the emerging trends that have been established for the betterment of Jamaica. And so you're in for a treat with the UIC government. So share the word. Right now, I want you to just share this live. I want you to like, and I see your comments and we do appreciate it and encourage your friends and your family to like, share, and of course, make sure you subscribe to the channel. There's a program every night and I should tell you tomorrow program is going to be a national security. And I, I, I'm promising you it's gonna be good but we don't need shy persons. We need persons to participate in tomorrow night. So I'm going to keep the lines open tomorrow as an experiment to see who is going to come on and share with us on national security. National security is everybody's security. It's not just my security. It's everybody's security. 
So we need you to come on and share with us tomorrow night. Okay? Tonight might be the first night that it took you off guard and you're shy. I can understand that. All right? But let, let's, let, let's jazz things up tomorrow. The, the president, by the way, is on some personal time off. Well, you know, he's a hardworking man. And uh, he needs some downtime to be with his family and to share with his family. And we do appreciate him. And we do wish him well in those down times, wish him to relax. So I want him to tune in and hear his regulars on communicating and, and sharing. So let, let's, let's get this done. Come on, Uniters. We, we need to get in that mood, right? But I, I can feel the vibe picking up. Cool guy said, you will hear my voice for sure. Thank you, cool guy. I look forward to talking with you tomorrow night about national security. So you, you can look and see what's happening. And we'll have a lively discussion on that tomorrow. Look forward to your support tomorrow night. And so definitely. Uh, Janet Graham says, also with solar panel, there is no visible wires in the case of natural disasters as with the current electrical wire during hurricane season that's true and there, there are drawbacks to everything but you're right that that is absolutely one drawback that we don't have to worry about we don't have to worry about serious injury or death from electrocution due to high voltage lines so definitely janet graham that's definitely one of the plus so we look forward gangster phd for example, if I have an idea for an invention, how do I get protection, like patent protection? Now, you, you can get protection in Jamaica, but what kind of protection? You know, when you hear about protecting brands in Jamaica, Brand Jamaica is the only brand you ever hear of that gets serious protection, but at the same time, is one of the most imitated brands throughout the world. But intellectual property rights, just like any other right, is one that the UIC believe in protecting equally. So when the UIC talk about protecting your right to life, liberty, and property, your intellectual property is just as valuable a property, if not more, as your real estate property or your 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 tools or your motor vehicle, anything that you you're you're titled to own. So we will protect all your properties equally. So your property will be protected, your, especially intellectual property, will be protected at the same level that mine is, at the same level that the that Andrew Holness's properties are protected, and so on. And that is the beauty of the non-partisan constitutional republic that the UIC is proposing. And I, I remember someone questioning if it's really possible. And I'm here to say to you that it's very possible all we have to do is decide that it's something that we want. Singapore decided that a long time ago and was able to move to a first world country status in about 20 years. Now, we are fast running out of time, but we still have a little time to decide where we want to go, what kind of future we want to create for the next generation, the succeeding generation. I've already decided the kind of future I want to create for my kids and their kids. Have you? Do you like the usury? the continued slavery more than you are afraid of a future of changing those are decisions that we all have to make but it's a decision that is intimate and the uic will guide you on that to show you what a true republic is right now we know there's a fake republic coming and you have seen and heard what the uic has to say about it and we have shown you an example so don't let anyone tell you that it, it's it's fictional it's a pie in the sky the UIC says it can happen. The UIC will make it happen. And our president and leader, Mr. Joseph L. Patterson. So, Uniters, I've come to what is the end of the program tonight. I look forward to being with you tomorrow night again. And thank you for those who shared with us. Please continue. And I look forward to hearing from you on the line. Uh, I see Gangsa PHA. I also had a question earlier. Uh, sorry, Gangster Page, I didn't see that question. Uh, if you had called me, then I would have heard that question and I would have responded to it. But uh, before we close, no problem. Go ahead, repeat your question in the chat or call me, 491-4995. And I'll take your question right now before we close. 
So go ahead and drop your question or call me with your question, Gangster Peach. I'll be happy to answer your question. Right. So while you're waiting on Gangster Peach, I'll give him just a quick minute to drop his question and see if it's something we can edify from. Uh, Alan Scott said, great job, Chief. Thanks. Appreciate you. Thank you, Alan. We do what we can to educate. Uh, we know that in this dispensation, fully done is what they're promoting. But the UIC believes that education is key, just like Marcus Garvey did. We believe that we have to strengthen our mind and strengthen our body with healthy organic food. And we make sure that we share the knowledge so we can make informed decisions for the long term, not just the short term planning thing with them. Depend. But I'm telling us, oh, five years down the road, and then five years down the road, the plan popped down and disaster. Okay? No, the UIC believes in continuum. So we'll project 50 years down the road and plan for 50 years down the road. And while we're working on that 50 years, we add another 50 to that. All right? But again, thank you, everyone, for joining in. Gangster Page, I'm going to have to sign off now. I didn't see your question. But I'll call me tomorrow. I'll still be happy to answer your question, even though it's a different topic. Let's talk. Oh, Gangster Page, I was just saying we we as investors need help. Well, and let me ask, what kind of help do you need, uh, Gangster Page? Uh, do you need a government that will tap into the market and say, hey, here's an investment that's safe for you? Or a government that will come and say, okay, let's, you know what, I would make sure that you're protected, but you have to do this, that, and that. Or you want a market that offers you all the information you need to invest, protect you from force and fraud, and make sure that if there is force and fraud, you have the ability to defend against that. That is what the UIC offer, not market control for the select or connected few, but a truly free market where you're free to exploit your potential. Okay, Gangster Page. Ah, you said not investors, inventors. Uh, thank you for that clarification. Uh, well, inventors do need help. And guess what? Uh, the best help is to make sure that you're able to tap into the commercial market to be able to do R&D and bring some very substantive products to the market. Now, if you're able... For example, there, there was a, a program I like to watch where inventors would go and pitch their ideas to investors. And from there, that investor would, if he likes the idea or she liked the idea, they would take you to, a, 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 I'm not sure what to call it, but a facility where you're able to now refine your idea and then pitch again based on that refinement. And you have an expert to help you along. And after that refinement and the help from the expert, if your product still stands up to scrutiny, then they'll invest in your product and help you with research and development to bring it to market. Those are the kind of things that need to happen in Jamaica. But it can't be at the governmental level. The government has no place in the market, but rather to act as a regulator for the market. It is up to persons like yourself and I, just like how Marcus Garvey went into the market and got financing for his Black Star line. And we need to be able to go into the market and get financing for the various products that we have, providing that you're protected from force and fraud. So again, my fellow Uniters, thank you for joining me. And well said, Janet Graham, we will teach each other how to fish. Thank you for being with me and have a pleasant good night. See you tomorrow night. National security is a topic. Good night. One Jamaica, stronger together.